Over the past three years, Syria's air force has rained death on more than 21,000 civilians. Their bodies ripped apart by exploding barrel bombs. Missiles dropped on homes, businesses, bus stops, even hospitals. These war crimes have been well documented. Not so the part played by the shadowy world of offshore finance. Behind the scenes, companies using offshore tax havens were accused of supplying fuel to the Syrian Air Force. In 2014, multiple governments, including the UK and US, issued bans on doing business with these companies. But now, a new global investigation has revealed that a Panamanian firm helped these companies operate as attacks in Syria continued. That firm, Mossack Fonseca, is a key player in a sprawling, secretive industry that the world's rich and powerful use to hide assets and skirt rules by setting up front companies in far-flung jurisdictions. More than 300 journalists trawled through millions of leaked records from Mossack Fonseca to expose an alarming list of clients involved in bribery, arms deals, tax evasion, financial fraud and drug trafficking. Behind the invoices, emails and paper trails are real victims. In Russia, businessmen kidnapped orphan girls as young as 13, raped them, then sold them to others for sex. After this rape, I was aching all over. I started very much fearing men. I felt as though they wanted only one thing, only sex with me. When I was taken into a foster home, I felt as though my foster father would rape me if I'm left alone with him. One of the alleged ringleaders was a client of Mossack Fonseca's. When the firm discovered their client was a pedophile, they decided they were not legally obliged to report his offshore business activities to authorities. In Uganda, a company that wanted to sell a prospective oil field paid Mossack Fonseca to help it avoid $400 million in taxes. It was simple paperwork. The company's address was changed from one tax haven to another. In a country where one in three people live on less than $1.25 a day, $400 million represents more than the government's annual health budget. Uganda spent years in court trying to force the company to pay its taxes. Meanwhile, hospitals in the shadow of the oil field lacked funds for even the most basic equipment. Patients slept on floors. They were asked to bring their own medical supplies, like sterile gloves and cotton balls. It was a surprise to me because I expected all this equipment to be at the health centre. When all these things are not there, nurses say we cannot work on you. At times, we are forced to leave and return home unattended to. Some women have lost their lives and babies. Uganda ranks among the worst 10 countries in the world for high maternal newborn and child mortality rates due to a lack of access to good health care. The offshore industry has recently come under fire for enabling dubious activities like these. But firms like Mossack Fonseca have helped clients continue to operate behind a veil of secrecy. Until this shadowy world is held accountable, international criminals will keep doing business, tax dollars will be dodged, and bombs will continue to fall.